if you say going into Friday night, he's Hayden's number one, the number one guy? I'd say he might be leaning a little bit. He might be leaning a little bit. But I, I evaluate not just on how they throw the ball, not just on you know how they how they come out here on the football field, but how they how they compete in meetings, how they how they handle the guys around, how they in the locker room. You know, there's there's some areas that a lot of those guys and all of us got to continue to grow and push our guys to grow in. Malik Clemens has typically been practicing as one of your number one safeties. What stood out about him? Malik continues to get better. I think just the discipline, the, the little fundamental things that you see that he understands the game. Now he's just got to make sure when you get to those situations, he can put it all together. You know, I think he had the one Saturday, the very first play of the game, where he should be in the deep middle as a post player, and you know he gets caught, you know, staring down inside and, and trying to be too aggressive as a middle of field safety. So I mean, it's, it's great to show. It's a great example, um, you know, for us to continue to build and to teach off of. But he's definitely a guy that, that, that has some energy to him. He's a guy that's played the game. He tackles very well, and uh, we're expecting big things out of him. This team didn't put a lot of pressure on the quarterback last year. Down near the bottom in sacks. As a defensive coach, what's your philosophy on that, the importance of doing it and how to do it? Well, sometimes the, the number one most overrated stat in football can be sacks. And I don't mean that like we don't want to get sacks. You know, D-line coaches go crazy. And, but the reality is sometimes you, you're all – wired up to go have sacks and everybody's running behind the behind the quarterback kind of like you saw today sometimes batted down balls and keeping a guy in a pocket is every bit as important as just coming free and making a sack um, but with that being said you've got to create pressure you've got to be able to put the the heat on the quarterback if you can do it with four great you know i've been at a place where we were fortunate enough with four guys to be able to put more heat on a quarterback than we could with five and six sometimes because they can go straight. So we're still developing and trying to figure out what it is for us that's best, but we know there's definitely we got to find ways to put heat on quarterbacks. Do you have any thoughts yet on how much you might have to blitz? Or? No, I mean, I think that you know, you know, we'll be smart about it, but third down's a different, you know, different animal. Um, you know, first and second down, there's some different things, and the game's changed too. I mean, nowadays, you know, you're going to be blitzing all the time, and these guys are side adjusting and, and hot reads and, you know, RPOs and things. It, it can put you in some tough situations. So, you know, that, that's a balance to what we got to be able to do, uh, as well as trying to figure out what we do well, too. Since Mike Boone has come back onto the field after being out, I guess, a little bit fortunate about the spring before spring break, what have you seen out of him, not only just on the field, but leadership wise, and taking on that kind of work? Mike's one of our best leaders. I mean, he, he brings energy every single day. You can tell he loves the game of football. He's going to continue to play this game of football uh, because he has a passion for it. You know, and, and sometimes I'm, I hurt the offense and I hurt those guys because I'm grabbing him and pulling him out and said, don't run him, you know, give him two carries, give him three carries, get him out. Um, just because deep, I know that Mike's going to be a big part of us having success uh, come the fall. And uh, we want to get him in there. We want to be able to, to, to let him get his feet wet and, and create some energy and some positivity uh, to the offense. But, you know, we're also trying to be smart. So, but if you see him, he's the guy that even when he's not in, he's the first guy out there. He's the first guy cheering. He's the first guy that's, that's picking up his teammates. And to me, that's what I look for in leaders. How important is having senior leadership like that, especially when you're trying to establish a new program here? There's only so much leadership you can provide from the sidelines. Some of that's got to come from these players. Yeah, it's and it's a it's a never-ending process. You know, it doesn't always just have to be seniors. You know, obviously your, your seniors got to play their best and they got to have their best year, and you know they got to make sure that they know what it's all about. But you know, we got to get leadership from all around, and uh, I think you're starting to see some of that even defensively. Uh, on offense, I think there are some senior guys that, by nature, you know, with with uh, Big Country and and, and uh, Mike Boone, that, that just naturally, you know, have been one of those guys. But now it's still us developing and making sure they understand what leaders have to do. Leaders aren't always just the guy that's the best friend and the guy that's rah rah cheer cheering. It's the guy that's also got to be honest with them. He's got to hold those guys in that locker room to a standard that, that he uh, that he wants to, you know, not just a standard that everybody else sets for it. And, and his standard has got to be high. And if he can hold other guys to his standard, then you know we're going to create the culture we want to create. We're good. Uh, now, what do you think bringing in a face like Marvin Lewis does for the players when they see him on the sideline watching them practice? I think everything here. I think with even the energy of you know, it was the first time they practiced in the in the stadium. I think and, you know now they're hearing about it. They didn't realize they hadn't played these guys here. Haven't played a spring game in the stadium. So to see some energy around the program, whether it's Coach Lewis, I mean, that's that's great for all of us as coaches too. To say, hey, you know, this this is important. This means something to the community. This means something to everybody around here. Um, and I think the guys are the same way. Whether it's Marvin Lewis, whether it's you guys coming out here to to cover them, uh, it's the people that are going to show up on Friday night. All those kinds of things generate. You know, this is a game of emotion. They're still 18 to 22 year olds. You know, we pound on them and we beat on them and we push them and all those things. But they still, you know, they love to see those things. They love the positivity uh, to what football can bring. 
and all that that we can do, I think, is awesome. Did you ask him to come here? No, sure? no. Actually, I've, I've text messaged with him a few times, and and uh, you know they've had they've had their meetings and they've had their uh, you know draft stuff and owners meetings and things like that. And the reality is, you know, this is something that's important. This is he's a guy of the community, and um, you know I would never do that. It's like I wasn't going to throw him out there and say run over and talk to our team. I mean, I would love for him to do it. I told him I would love for that at some point in time, but I also want him to feel like he can come and get a piece of football and enjoy himself a little bit. And, pick his brain for sure as much as I can. Did you know he was coming today? You know what, I, I got a text from him last night that uh, he was going to swing by. I was worried that uh, the weather might uh, might scare him away, but <laughs> obviously he's a true football guy that uh, the weather didn't uh, didn't worry so him. So you never actually asked him to come, you just texted him and just tanned I, I had texted him when I got the job, and we've kind of texted back and forth, and I said, hey, I'm looking forward to getting together with you, and he said, come down anytime, and I said, hey, anytime you want to come down, come on down, and I actually got a message yesterday that that I thought he was going to come by, so I texted him last night, and, and uh, sure enough, he showed up. So, uh, very impressed.